Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. If you're a Lightroom Classic user, you probably know that Adobe has been doing a lot with Lightroom. Most notably, a couple years ago, they added new masking to Lightroom. And with each subsequent release of Lightroom Classic, they've added to and improved that masking. A few months ago, they added a content-aware remove tool. And very recently, the last release, they added AI-powered noise reduction. They call it Denoise AI, or as someone likes to remind me in the comments, you may want to pronounce it Denoise AI. Either way, all of these additions to Lightroom Classic are welcome. What these additions have done is they've caused me to change my workflow, my sequence of events, how I go about processing images in Lightroom Classic. And today, I want to give you a short example of how I would go about processing an image with today's Lightroom Classic. We're going to be working on a wildlife image, but the sequence of events that I'm going to be show you is pretty much applicable to any type of image. Now, this is an unedited RAW file. You can see at the top, it's a Nikon file. It was uh, shot with an ISO of 800. So if I zoom in, you can see that there's a considerable amount of both luminance and color noise. So what I want to do first is get rid of the noise. I always recommend that you remove noise early in your workflow. The thing about this new Lightroom denoise is it really doesn't matter. You could do it later in your workflow because it really looks at the raw file without any editing done to it. It removes the noise and then it takes those edits you did do and then puts them on the new file. The reason though, you still want to do it early in your workflow because often you'll be adding sharpening and texture and clarity and contrast. And once the noise is removed, when those adjustments get applied to that new file that doesn't have noise in it any longer, uh, you have to go back in and tweak them. So you might as well just do noise reduction right away. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to open up the detail tab and denoise is right here and I want to remind everyone that this new denoise only works on images that were a raw file specifically that were shot with a Bayer or X-Trans sensor so that's most Nikon cameras a lot of Canon cameras um, and Fuji cameras um, Sony cameras but there are some cameras out there that don't use either of those sensors unfortunately as of now Denoise will not work on those images, but Adobe has said that they will be expanding Denoise to other sensors, and also they'll be expanding it so it works on other types of files, not just manufacturer raw files. For instance, it doesn't work on linear DNGs right now. So if you import your Fuji X Trans sensor um, raw files into Lightroom, but you convert them to DNG, unfortunately, denoise will not work for you. But as I mentioned, Adobe said they will be expanding it in the future, and hopefully it will work on DNGs very soon and work on other file types, including JPEGs and TIFFs. Now, this is an icon raw file, so denoise is um, active. I could use it on this file. I'll just click denoise. You get this little enhanced preview window. You could zoom out and then click on the image to get a more critical area and you can see how it cleaned up the noise. You can see a before after by just clicking on the image. There's before and there's after and I'll just click enhance. And you can see in the top left hand corner there is a progress bar. What Lightroom does, it doesn't touch the original raw file because it is a non-destructive image editor. It's going to create a new file, another raw file, a DNG file, and this DNG file will have all the noise reduced. And if you did do any editing on the original fi raw file, those edits will get copied over to the new DNG file. And this is it right here. Uh, this is the new raw file. And if I zoom in maybe here, you can see how the noise is reduced. And if I go up to view and I lock the zoom position and I click on the original raw file, you can see that there's a lot of noise there. And there is this new DNG file and the noise is reduced. All right, so that was step one. Step two, this was shot with a DSLR. Uh, it's a relatively old image. Um, if I hit I a couple times, it was taken in 2017. So I do need to do lens corrections. If you shoot with a mirrorless camera, these get applied automatically, at least with most mirrorless cameras. So I'll do that. 
Now, next, I want to do global adjustments. And by global adjustments, for me, they're really just going to be tone. So I'm going to open up the basic tab. And in this case here, uh, the shadows are really muddy and dark. So I'm going to open up the shadows quite a bit. And I just kind of eyeball it and I want to see detail in this darkest area here. So I'll just move it till I see like every single feather uh, very clearly. And then in the brightest areas in here, I want to make sure I'm seeing, seeing detail there. So I'll pull shadow or highlights down, I'm sorry, to make sure I see everything pretty good there. Then I'll get a white and black point. And the way I most often do it is I hold the option key on my Mac. It's all can of PC. Click on the whites slider. You'll get an entirely black screen. Then I move this to the right until I see some colors coming through. I'm starting to clip those color channels. You can see I'm clipping blue and green. So I just want to pull that down then until all those colors dissipate. To me, for me, the way I process my images, that's a perfect white point. I'm not clipping any of the highlights at all. Then I'll do the same thing for blacks. So hold that option key and I'll can the PC. Click here and you can see I'm clipping a little already, but I don't mind clipping the shadows. Um, I think it just gives my images more depth to have some absolute black in the image. So I'll just pull that down a little bit, then kind of eyeball it. And sometimes I'll adjust it without holding the alter option key down just to readjust. So that's all I do here globally. I don't add any texture or rarely add any texture or clarity globally, and I don't add any saturation or vibrance. Uh, globally. I prefer to use masking for those adjustments because I want to add texture to specific things. For instance, I want to add texture to the bird, but I don't want to add texture or clarity to the background. So I'll save those for masking. So I won't do anything here. And this is a big difference in my workflow compared to what it was just a few years ago, because my next step used to be just go and move texture and clarity. And now I'm not going to do that. Now, I just did tone. I basically moved four sliders. But I, on occasion, I, of course, would adjust exposure if needed. I rarely use contrast slider. I prefer to use the tone curve if I want to add contrast. So at this point, I would do that globally as well. But for this image, I just needed to move those four sliders, and that's it. Now, the next step is you need to remove any spots or if you have any objects you need to remove. These should be done before you do any masking because uh, if you remove them or if you do masking first, then try to remove, let's say it's a landscape image and there's a paper cup on the ground and you just want to remove that and you masked the grass so that you could make it more vibrant or something. What you'll find is that the uh, spot removal or whatever you're using to remove that cup, it will look horrible. You need to do this, any removal, any spot removal, cloning, or healing done uh, before you do masking. Now for this image, I really only have this one spot right here and I want to get rid of it. So I'm going to click on the little band-aid here. As you can see, it's the healing section. And I'm going to use this first one, the new one, the content aware remove tool. And I got a brush that's a perfect size. I'll just click once and you can see it got rid of it. I have op opacity low, but we'll turn it all the way up and there, totally got rid of it. So I'm done. Of course, as I mentioned, if there were other things I wanted to get rid of, if there was a you know piece of garbage up here or something or, or bird poop or something, and I wanted to get rid of it, I would do that now. So now I'm ready for masking. And this is the good part. This is where I really adjust specific parts of the image to my liking. And the key point is my liking. This is where you could really express yourself in your photography. Instead of doing all these global adjustments that everyone always does, you could do specific masking adjustments that suit you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the masking tool and I want to do something with the bird first. So I'm going to click on the subject and you could see with the red overlay, it found the bird perfectly. This is where they've improved the masking with each subsequent release. When masking was first introduced and they had a subject mask, it didn't work as effectively as this, but now it's working great. So since I already did global adjustments, I don't, um, global tone adjustments, I really don't need to do any tone adjustments uh, to the bird, but I do uh, want to go to presence and I want to add texture to the feathers of the bird. Maybe just a touch of clarity 
just a touch. I'll go to detail and I'll add a tiny bit of sharpening. It is pretty sharp. I don't want to over sharpen it. All right. So I add a little sharpening. And then I'm going to go to color. Even though the bird is generally black, white, and gray, there is just a little splash of color here under the wing. So I'm going to go uh, to color. And I'm going to go to the saturation slider. And I'm going to move that to the right a little bit. So that's my mask that I did uh, for the bird. I think that's fine. I think that's perfect. Now, this log or piece of tree that it's standing on, I want to do something with that. That just kind of looks drab. So I need to mask that. But that obviously isn't the subject, and that isn't the background. So how are we going to mask that? Let me click here, and you'll see objects. It's an objects mask. So we'll click that. And what I want to do is use the brush. There's two different ways you could do this, or modes. You have a brush, and then you have the ability to just like draw a rectangle around something, and it will find what's inside of that rectangle. But in this case, I'm going to use the brush. And I'm going to use a pretty big brush, and I'm just going to draw around the outside. I don't have to worry about tracing it perfectly, nothing like that. I'm just going to draw like this something like that, and then let go and let it find it. And there, look at, it found it perfectly. So it found the log, it, fine. So what I wanna do here is, um, I'm gonna go to tone first. And I want to, it looked kinda drab, and one way to make drab things look better is you add contrast to them. And I really don't like the contrast slider, because when you move the contrast slider, it just basically makes the darker things darker and the lighter things lighter in equal amounts, if that makes any sense. I prefer to do it my way. So I'll go to the whites slider and I'll move that to the right. And I'm just making the brightest parts a little brighter. And I'll go to the blacks and make the darkest parts a little darker. So I just added contrast. I could do this uh, similar thing with highlights and shadows. I don't think I need to do that here. But what I will do is I'll go to color. And you can see there is a lot of nice earth tone color in that log. So I'm going to take saturation to the right. Maybe a lot. It was kind of a colorful log. It was kind of rotting, and it was good. So I think that looks pretty good right there. You know, I'm really done with my local adjustments or mask. Uh, so I, I'm done. I could do something with the background if I wanted to. I could come up here, create a new mask, and select the background. You could see it's selected including the log. We don't want that, so I'd have to subtract. Right, subtract with a brush. Or I could use an object, subtract with an object, and I could come in here and do the same thing, paint around our log. And here, in this case, I'm, I, in real life, if I was editing, editing this without making a video, I wouldn't be doing this at all. I don't think the background needs anything done to it. So you can see how it removed that log perfectly. And then, I don't know, what could I do to the background? I could make it less colorful, maybe and maybe go up to tone and just bring exposure down a touch so the bird stands out a little more. But that gives you an idea how you could use masking to affect or adjust specific parts of an image. So I'm gonna close down masking, I'm done with that, and I'm just going to finish the image like I typically do. Um, I'll go to effects and I'll add a dark vignette. And you can see just like that. And if you bring it in just a little, something like that that looks good so there is before and there is after there is before and there is after that's my new workflow when using lightroom to edit a raw file let me know how you're working with this new the new tools found in lightroom the new masking the content aware remove tool and of course the new AI noise reduction. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.